Hey, what's up? Today we're gonna to talk about files. As a programmer, you need to know how to work with files. You need to know how to open them and close them and read and write and do all those things. You, it's just something you need to know. And I'm guessing most of you have some experience with files. This isn't gonna be brand new, but I do find that students get confused about file IO. And today I wanna to help with that by showing you two different ways that you can open, close, read, write, basically work with files and hopefully help you keep them straight. So let's open some files. When you're trying to open a file, the most common function you're gonna to go to is fopen. fopen takes a file name. It also takes a mode string that, that basically tells you how you wanna open that file. Do you wanna be read, write? Do you wanna to append to the end or do you wanna truncate the file? So this is all contained in that, in that mode string. And fopen is gonna return a pointer to a file struct. And you basically use that pointer as a handle to access that file and to pass to other functions that use pointers to file structs. And this is like fopen, fread, fwrite, fprintf, fscanf, feof, and of course fclose. So let's look at an example. So let's do something simple. Let's open one file for reading, one file for writing. We'll read the first file in character by character. And then whenever we find a period, let's change it to an exclamation point. And then we can close both files with fclose. And this isn't a super useful program, but it's kind of fun. It basically, I don't know, maybe it makes text more emphatic. Maybe it adds some enthusiasm to the text. And to test it out, I have a text file here that I created. It contains the Gettysburg Address, which wasn't quite as long as I wanted, so I also added all the text for the US Constitution, because why not? I needed text. And so when we run our little program, it takes this very important text and it gives it the punctuation it deserves. It gives it some serious exclamation enthusiasm. But whether or not the US Constitution is better with exclamation points is not the point. The point is that now you know how to read and write files with fopen. And this example reads one character at a time. You don't have to do it this way. You can also read in full lines, you can read in formatted text, or you can read in just raw binary data in blocks of whatever size you want. And of course, each of these functions have their own write counterpart for writing lines of text, writing formatted data, or writing binary data. And these functions are all part of the C standard library, so they're portable. You can pretty much use them on any platform you want that supports the C standard library, which is all of them. So that's option number one. The second option I want to talk about is open, which is a system call that you're going to find on Linux, Mac OS, or any POSIX compliant operating system. Just like fopen, open is going to take a file name, but then instead of a mode string, you're going to give a bunch of mode flags and you basically bitwise or them together, but you're communicating basically the same things. So you're saying, I want to read from this file, or I want to write to this file, or create this file if it doesn't exist. Do we want to truncate it? Do we want to append? Basically, these are all the different types of flags that we can pass in to open. And instead of returning a pointer to a file struct, it just returns an int. This is called a file descriptor. And this int, this file descriptor, is just the number that the operating system uses to keep track of open files. Every open file has a number, and it's a file descriptor. And so here's what our example looks like when we use open instead of fopen. You notice instead of f get c and f put c, we use read and write, which are simpler, more straightforward names, but probably more generic and more complicated functions. And at the end, we use close instead of f close to close both the files. So it's pretty similar. It's, it's not that different. It may be a little more complicated, but if we compile the second version and run it, we see that it's functionally equivalent to the first. Both of them took the first text, replaced the periods with exclamations. This begs the question of why. Why do we have two ways to do the same thing? How are they related? How are they different? And what I wanna help you see today is that there are some significant differences and I wanna help you understand what they are and how they work. So let's look a little closer. The first difference is that fopen is a library call and open is a syscall. If you're not clear about the difference between a syscall and a library call, check out my strace and ltrace video that I made back, I'll link in the description. It can help provide some clarification, but it basically means that open is the lower level call. And interestingly, fopen actually uses open. You can think of fopen as the higher level abstraction. It provides a simpler interface. It's basically trying to make open more user friendly. Now, if we time these, we'll notice another important difference. So here we run the first, we run the second. You'll notice that the version that uses open is 100 times slower. That's strange. So fopen is calling open. How can the fopen version be so much faster? The answer is that fopen uses buffering. So you notice that my program reads one character at a time, one byte at a time from that file. Every single character, there's a separate read. And when I use open, this is producing a lot of system calls. We're asking the kernel for one byte at a time. That's gonna be a lot of context switches. It's gonna be a lot of system calls. It's gonna be slow. So fopen tries to be a little smarter about that. It tries to anticipate what you might want, what you might need. So it's gonna buffer the reads and the writes and try to do all those things that I'm doing in fewer system calls. So it may not write each of those characters at exactly the time that I say write them. It may batch them up and then wait until it has enough and then it's gonna push them all to disk. 
and reading and writing in larger chunks is just a lot more efficient. So once again, we're back to our same problem. There are two different options, but why would we ever use Open? Fopen is simpler, easier to use, more portable, and faster. So why use Open? And the answer is really control. In any kind of Unix-based operating system, there are a lot of things that are files that aren't really files. Things like pipes and serial ports and other devices. And it turns out that for some of these, when you interact with them, timing matters and buffering is not always desirable. In some cases, buffering may still be desirable, but often it's not. Often, when I say send this character, that character needs to go right now. It needs to, I don't want it to wait for later. I want it to get sent right now because this isn't a file I'm writing into, this is, it's a device or it's a, I've got a microcontroller on the other side of a serial port and I'm trying to send data to it. And so I need to get that data through now. And so using buffering in this case, even though it may be great for files, it can cause problems for me. And so the main thing I wanna get across today is that these are two different ways of attacking the problem. One is higher level, one is lower level, and they each have their place in the world. Most of the time in most of your projects, when you are dealing with files, you're gonna use fopen. It's easier, it's faster, it makes sense. And open's gonna give you more control, but sometimes you may want that control. So keep an eye out for file descriptors because they may come in handy. In fact, they're gonna come in handy because very soon I've, I've already promised in past videos that I'm gonna do a video about memory mapped file IO and then file descriptors are gonna become important. We're gonna have to actually use open or we're gonna have to get a hold of a file descriptor. And I don't have time to get to that today, but it's coming very soon. And if you haven't seen memory mapped IO, it's gonna blow your mind. It's super cool. But that's all the time I have for today. Now you know the difference between fopen and open, between file struct pointers and file descriptors, hopefully library calls and syscalls, buffered IO versus non-buffered IO. And hopefully that'll help you on your next project to make things more efficient and simpler. And so until next time, I'll see you later.